up, everybody? What's up? It's your girl, Kiki, also known as Pastor Keyshawn and Inman. Thank you so much for joining me on today because I have an awesome kingdom power pick me up to lift your spirit. Welcome. If this is the first time that you are joining my channel, um, please like and subscribe to my channel if something is said to bless your spirit. On this channel, I do weekly quick Bible teachings just to lift your spirit, um, encouragement to lift your spirit so that you can make it through the day. Amen. So thank you again so much for watching and joining me. And today I'm going to talk about keys to building a firm foundation. Well, let me say it this way. I'm going to give you keys for a strong foundation. Okay. So we're going to talk about that a little bit on today. Keys, you need keys, you need nuggets, you need insight, you need wisdom in order to build a firm foundation in God, right? We need to know how to be equipped in order to maintain our relationship with God. Too many people are leaving the church. Too many people are going back and forth. Too many people are straddling the fence because they have not been rooted and grounded in God. Amen. All right. So we need to break up some follow ground. Follow ground is in our lives. There is stuff and junk and mess in our lives that though we are saved, but yet we got to do some work. We got to roll up our sleeve and look at the look in the mirror at our own selves and see What's the ugliness within ourselves? And whatever we confess unto God, he'll get it out. But we got to do some work as well. Amen. Sometimes we got to leave people alone, walk away from things. We got to give up some things in order to what? Have a successful and a growing relationship with God. I often say you got to build your personal relationship with God. I don't care how long you've been in the way. There's always a death in God and a height in God that you have not met yet. There's deepness in God and there's a, a higher height in God that you can all get to. Amen. God is not limited. He is surely not limited. And when you begin to find him, you'll find out that he is truly Jehovah Jireh, my provider. You'll find out for yourself that he is truly the God of peace, Jehovah Shalom. You'll truly find out that he is Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals all manner of sickness, infirmities, and diseases. The more you draw not a God, he draws not a you. Amen. You got to do whatever it takes to build your personal relationship with God. So I'm getting ready to talk about keys to having or building a firm foundation, you got to be rooted and grounded in God and not be easily moved by what you see. So I have some notes here that I'm going to jump right into and share with you on today. Key number one, number one is determination. Uh oh, You got to have a determination. You got to have a made up mind and you got to have a mind to say, I'm going to accomplish this. I'm going all the way. What does determination mean? Simply firmness and purpose because of Jesus. You got to have a firmness and purpose because of Jesus. You got to know in whom you have believed. Why you live in hope? Why you go to church? Why you reading your Bible? Why you, you know, doing the things that you uh, believe that God has called you to do? So you got to have a determination and a made up mind. You got to have that. That's number one. Number two, you got to have a backbone, a backbone. Yes. Let's talk about that y'all for a moment. Backbone. Listen, when we was in the world, some of us was the roughest, toughest, walking the streets. We had mad respect on the street, right? Okay. So what about the kingdom of God? Do you really think that God is going to take your boldness and your fight? and your stamina that you had in the street away from you just because you got saved? No, he does not. He know who he created. He created us strong. He created us resilient. He created us bold. He created us with some of us that we don't take down or back down for nothing and nobody and whatever was on our mind sometimes we speak it, right? So God will use that same 
determination that's in us or that same resilience that we have or the same character that we have and use it for his glory. He wants you to be bold in the kingdom of God because the devil is bold in the kingdom concerning the kingdom of God. He wants you to be uh, resilient and not back down or take down. Listen, we fighting a real enemy, Satan and the kingdom of darkness and all his imps and demons that is coming up against us in every way. We are fighting oppression. We're fighting depression. We're fighting manipulation. We're fighting sabotage. We're fighting havoc and tragedy. We're fighting premature death. The enemy is on assignment in so many different ways against the righteous. Hallelujah. That we got to pray more. We got to fast more. So that's why today I'm sharing with you some keys in order to build your foundation. So you got to have a backbone. Don't give up. Stand up in the word of God. Stand up for truth. Stand up for whom and what you believe in. Don't back down. Amen. Okay. Three. High morale. You got to have a high praise. Keep your praise going. The Bible says in Psalms 34 and 1, one of my favorite scriptures, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Come on. You got to learn how to bless God in the low places. And you got to learn how to bless God in the high places. God is still good and he's worthy to be praised. Yes, we're going to go through trials and tests, but they only come to build us up. Amen. They only come, hallelujah, to produce who God is in us, right? In order to know what's in us, we got to be crushed. We got to be pressed out in order to know what's in us. And when we get pressed out, then God with his awesome self can come in and in the fullness of who he is within us. So keep your praise going. Keep on blessing them. Keep on with a song in your mouth. That's what the word tells us to do. Sing to yourself. Sing songs and hymns. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Just sing to him. Give him glory because he inhabits what? The praises of his people. All right. Number four. Root in morality. You got to have a root in morality. What is that saying? understanding and exhibiting the ability to walk in the difference between good and evil. In other words, you got to have discernment. You got to know what's right and what's wrong. You got to stand for either good or you're going to stand for evil. No man can serve two masters, y'all. Either you're going to love one and hate the other. Amen. So you got to have um, that morale. You got to have discernment, if you will, in order to make sound choices and decisions. Don't be double-minded because the Bible says in James, you ain't going to receive nothing of the Lord when your mind is over here one day and over here the next. No, you cannot be double-minded when you don't know what to believe. Believe the word of the Lord because the word has already been tried. Amen. Believe what God said about you. Believe his promises. Believe his principles. Hallelujah. Believe the prophetic in the word of God. God cannot lie. Try him for yourself. All right. Number five. You got to have courage. No fear. No fear. No fear. You cannot fear. The Bible tells us this. God has not given us the spirit of fear. But what power, love, and of a sound mind. That's what you got to have. So I'm on the fifth key. Y'all got that so far? So, so far, let me recap. You got to have determination, number one. You gotta have a backbone, number two. You gotta have high morale, number three. You gotta have a root and morality, number four. And number five, you gotta have courage. Got it? Let's move on. Number six, you gotta have devotedness. If you're not devoted to anything, if you're not devoted to God, if you're not devoted to the things of God, then surely you're not going to make it. If you're not devoted to your job, you're not going to go. If you're not devoted to your family, then you're not going to be dedicated. You're not going to cook and clean and do the things that your family needs to make sure your family is intact, right? Okay, so you got to have devotion. you got to spend time with God. you got to learn how to love God. you got to learn how to love His Word. you got to learn who He is for yourself. Because if you never know who he is, then you operate in or believe in somebody else's testimony, but where is yours? 
See, you got to have a testimony. And when God has done something for you, hallelujah, how can you forget the God that made a way out of no way? We can't do it. Amen. We all have a moment sometime of temporary insanity. Yes, we do. Because the enemy will throw one curveball after another, after another, after another. And every time you pray and get up and want a breathing space, you can't. So we can't let up in prayer. But sometimes we want to. Sometimes we get tired of always doing the things that we know to do is right. And we just want to breathe. We just want to relax. It don't mean that we want to give up. It just means that we want to relax. But when you relax, you leave the door open for the enemy to come in. We can't do that. And when he sees a crack, he coming in, break the door down and take over. That's his goal. That's his mission. See, one thing about the enemy, he never gives up. He never gives up. He's always on his job. You never heard about the enemy retiring, right? You never heard about the enemy being laid off, right? You never heard the enemy being fired, right? Okay, so what about us in the in, in the word of God as believers? We can't leave, forsake, want to retire, and give up. We got to stay in the fight. We got to stay devoted to God. All right, number seven, tenacity. One of my favorite words gotta have tenaciousness you have to have the ability to retain and hold to what is true what is true the word of God everything else is going down but the word is going to forever stay so hold fast to what is true that is God's word number eight persistence oh goodness you gotta be persistent you know like a gnat or a fly that you're trying to wave away because you know you're trying to eat outside and enjoy your food and here come that fly and the more you wave the more they come the more you wave the more they come the more you wave the more they come right okay so you got to be that way you got to be that way in the face of the enemy every time hallelujah the enemy is hitting you then you got to rise up and be persistent in prayer you got to be intentional in prayer you got to be intentional in reading your word you got to be intentional and be persistent in giving god glory and praise hallelujah the angels of god are not going to do that for you but they will come in when you open up yourself and set the atmosphere then they will come in and they will fight for you but you got to do something. The Bible says this, he that cometh to God must first believe. So do you believe? Do you even believe? Do you even believe that when you open your mouth, you're doing something? When you give God a real praise from the depths of your spirit, when you just break out in a crazy praise and say, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to bless you. Hallelujah. And you begin to walk the floor and tears streaming down your eyes and it hurt and you broken and you in pain and you don't know what's going on when you don't understand and God has not answered you. But yet, hallelujah, you are persistent in getting to Jesus. If I can just touch, hallelujah, the hem of his garment, hallelujah, you got to know that you going to be made whole. You got to know your marriage going to be made whole. You got to know if you just be persistent that God is going to answer your prayer concerning your children. Did not the word of God say that the a seed of the righteous shall be delivered? That is the word. That is a promise. You got to believe the promise. This is what I need you to do. Find the word of the Lord that applies to you on today. Write it down about five scriptures. Apply it to each and every one of your situations. And then begin to walk the floor and deliver the word of the Lord and say, God, I'm giving you your word now. You said, my children, which are your seed, and you gave me my seed, God. So now, I need you to deliver them. Now you said in your word that the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. And you told me that greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. So I choose to believe God. I know that the enemy looks like he's winning and he's trying to give him life to imprisonment or he's trying to take him out through drugs and he's trying to take him out through all manner of wickedness. But you got to stand in the gap and know that your prayers are intervening. Hallelujah. That's why you got to be persistent. Hallelujah. All right. Number nine. Hallelujah. Number nine. Resolve. Woo. You got to have a formal resolution that the things pertaining to God 
are settled in your heart without any if, ands, or buts. You gotta know that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know, that the God that you serve, hallelujah, is able to deliver you. That the God that you serve, hallelujah, he's coming through for you. You gotta be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding, what? In the word of God. Don't be moved by what you see. But you got to have a resolve. The resolution is the word of God. Everything that we need is found in God's word. All right, number 10. I'm almost done. I got a few more. An unrelented mindset. You got to have a mind made up that you believe God no matter what. That you're going to stand. That you're going to go through. That you're not going to give up. That you're going to make a decision to believe God. And that's it. That settles that matter. You're not going to waver. You're not going to doubt. You're not going to fear. But you're going to stand in your mind. Knowing that I know in whom I have believed. And I know that he's able to deliver me. So now let me recap. All right. Number six. Devotedness. Number seven. Tenacity. Number eight. You gotta be persistent. Number nine, you gotta have a resolution. You gotta know that the word of God is your resolution. And number 10, you gotta have a steadfast mindset. All right? Okay. Number 11, last three, y'all. You gotta have a violent spirit. The Bible tells us the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. Why? Because the enemy is fighting against the angels and the angels are fighting against the enemy and they're warring over the souls of man. Hallelujah. So you got to have a violent spirit. In other words, not reckless violence, but a violent, uh, a fervent prayer life. Let me say that. You got to have a prayer life that is full of fire. That when you hit the floor, you start sweating because you done tapped into the presence of God. Because God is fire all by himself. And he will either consume a matter, hallelujah, and destroy it. Or he will, oh God, hallelujah, just purify. And it won't destroy you, but it'll purify you. Hallelujah. So you got to be violent for the kingdom of God. You got to stand. In other words, you got to be reckless. Hallelujah. But not reckless destructively. But you want to be reckless for God that the word can fight for you. The word can tear down the walls. The word can break chains. The word can destroy yokes. The kingdom of heaven suffer violence. But the violent Take it by force. Number 11, you got to be submitted. Your will goes out the door. You got to have a submitted will. Your will should be the will of God. Jesus said it like this. He said, my need is to do the will of him that sent me. That was Jesus' focus. So in other words, he wasn't worried about nothing else the carnal nature of this world or materialistic. Furthermore, Matthew 6 and 33 simply tells us this, to help us seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. All those other things that you need and desire, it will be added to you. But when you take care of God's business, he going to take care of yours. So when you submit your will, to his will, yes, it's uncomfortable. But I want you to know that partial obedience is dis disobedience still. I want you to know convenient obedience, doing it according to your will, and then giving God half of your will, that's still disobedience. So trust God and have a submitted will. Amen. Last one. Uh, you got to have a knowledge of the kingdom of God. What do you mean? Because we sometimes talk about the kingdom. But if you don't really know about the kingdom, then it's hard for you to understand the kingdom. When you read the scriptures in the New Testament, Jesus said it multiple times, repetitively, back to back. He said, the kingdom of God is light. The kingdom of God is light. The kingdom of God is light. And he gave many different analogies. So you got to let the word know you and you got to know the word. You got to open your heart and mind. And when you don't know what to say, say, Holy Spirit, I need you to open my heart and my mind 
to the kingdom. Teach me the kingdom. What is the kingdom? Remember, the kingdom of God has precepts, ordinances, and statutes. There's a governing authority, and that is God. Hallelujah. And he has everything set in order for us to abide by down here in the earth and in heaven. Amen. So we got to know the will of God, the mind of Christ. But the only way to get that in is to seek him. Seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. So listen, I want you to know this. A house divided against itself, it cannot stand. So when you're working against your own self and you're trying to do your own thing, but yet you say you say that's not going to work. There's only one person that's going to be in control. And whoever you give yourself to, that's the strong man in your life. That's the ruling spirit. Whatever you decide to do more of, whatever it is that is always first in your life, that's your priority. That's where your heart is. But the Bible tells us where your heart is. It should, it should be set on things above, but where your heart is, uh, you know, the treasures and your heart, they all work together. So that's where your love is. That's where your desires is, right? All right. So the enemy's job comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Don't let him steal your joy. Don't let him steal your peace. He's already took enough from you. It's time for you to rise up and fight back. So these are foundational keys to help you build your personal relationship with God. You got to lay a firm foundation. You got to be steadfast. You got to be unmovable and you got to abound in the word of the Lord. Jesus is no failure in him. He is the chief cornerstone. Are you going to stand on him and his promises? Because he cannot fail you. Trust God. Trust him for yourself. Know that if you work at it, build at it, which is your temple now, you. Know ye that your body is what the temple of the Holy Ghost. So the more you build, the more you lay your foundation, then guess what? You can stand. Now your house can be built upright because you're laying a firm foundation, which is the word of God. You're doing the things that he said. Also add in there the fruits of the spirit. Come on, you gotta operate in love. You gotta have some joy. It's not always you're happy, but you gotta have joy. When you got joy, you get some strength, right? The joy of the Lord, it is our strength. When you get joy, you gotta have peace. Come on, you gotta have the fruits of the Spirit according to Galatians. That's who we are. That's who God is. And when we say we love God, then we gotta represent who He is in every aspect and angle of our lives. Amen. The devil wants to chip away at your foundation. But in Psalms it says, if the foundations be destroyed. Hallelujah. What cannot the sinner do, but the righteous do? So that's something to think about. Don't let the devil chip away at your foundation. I need you to stand. Bible says, having done all, you stand. Psalm says, and I shall be planted. I need you to be planted like a tree by the rivers of water that you shall bring forth your fruit in your season. Your leaf is not going to wither in this season. And whatever you do, it shall prosper. Hallelujah. Give God the glory. Give him all the honor. And give him all the praise. Hallelujah. That's it for today. I thank you so much for joining me. I thank you so much for watching. And if this video has blessed you, please do me a favor. Like it and subscribe to my channel, please. Um, share the video with someone if you will. But listen, be encouraged. God is the master builder. And when you give him you, he going to have his way in you. Trust God. Believe him. And build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Because God is able to do everything but fail.